Building on that last video, I just want to tease some sensory illusions where we'll see examples where the brain's interpretation doesn't match reality. For example, look around at this pattern. Just kind of look around, different corners, different sides. Do you kind of see four quadrants that are a little tilted relative to each other? Most people do, even though everything is lined up in a perfectly straight line here. As you can verify yourself, if you hold a ruler up to your screen, or just check this comparison I made to the side where I put some lines through it. Same thing. Now, look at this pattern. This is called the cafe wall illusion. As your eyes look back and forth across this pattern, it's hard not to see each row as angling down, kind of like the levels in the classic arcade game Donkey Kong. But everything here, again, is perfectly straight. It's nothing but 90 degree right angles, pure horizontal and pure vertical. The brain adds the illusory perception of tilt. This one's always intriguing if you haven't seen it before. Let's start with an easy question. Uh, between A and B, which square would you say is the darker square? Most people answer A, right? It's clearly a dark gray square. But they're actually the same freaking color. Same color, same brightness, exact same. If you compare the pixels in Photoshop or cover everything else up and just look at those two, they are the same, but they don't look that way to our brain. Our brain can't help but see A as darker because it's not just looking at the proximal stimulus for each square that we're looking at. It's looking at the, the surrounding information. It's taking into account the contextual information around it, like the fact that it knows B is in shade and A is not. This one's called the checker shadow illusion. For this one, we basically got four cubes in a row. Now, how many cube faces do you see? In other words, how many sides of these cubes are visible to you? I see four tops and four sides plus that front one facing us on the left. So that's nine, right? And you probably got the same answer. Okay, easy enough. Which cube face is the darkest one? Or I could ask you, which cube face is the lightest one? Now, most people might point to one of these ones down here near in the, the bottom left as being the darker, darkest and one of these ones up here at the top as being the lightest. Would you believe me if I told you all nine faces are the exact same color, the same brightness, there's no difference between them. And if you don't believe me, you can try hovering your finger over just the line where each face meets the next. Just hover your finger over that and look to the, each side of your finger and you'll see your, your, the color is the same on each side. In fact, to make it a little easier on you or in case your screen isn't the right size, I've just covered these up. I just took the same image and added a little cover to the borders. And you'll see to, to the left and right of each border, to, to each side of those, those lines I drew, the faces on this image, those cubes are the same color. But it's not just those front two cubes, right? So the front one is the same as the second one, but the second one's also the same as the third one. They're the same color. Again, you can compare this in Photoshop or just snippet them out in MS Paint or whatever else and you can see they are exactly the same. And same with the back two. So all four of these cubes have faces of the exact same side, whether it's the top, the right side, the front, the, like all, the, all nine faces that are visible are the exact same color. But even knowing that, it's hard to see it that way. Because perceptual processes, the perceiving that our brain does through that complicated process, those perceptual processes are often automatic and out of our conscious control. Sometimes we say these illusions can be cognitively impenetrable. Even if you understand it at a conscious cognitive level, you still can't make yourself see something different. Let's look at some more examples. Here we've got a simple map of the world with the land masses in green and the water more of a blue, right? Except the green of the land and the blue of the water are the exact same shade. On land, that color is next to orange for the brain to compare it to. Well, on the water, it's next to purple for the brain to compare it to. So compared to purple, it's a relatively blue shade. Compared to orange, it's a relatively green shade. Same color hitting our eyes. Same color information hitting our eyes as the proximal stimulus, but we see it different depending on the surrounding context. Here we've got green and blue spirals, right? Except just like the last one, the green parts and the blue parts are the same freaking color. 
You can compare them in Photoshop or cut a little snippet out in MS Paint, put them side by side, or just cover and remove enough of this and the surrounding bits or print it out and cut out the little green bit and a little blue bit and hold them next to each other and you'll see exact same color. But it's hard for our brain to perceive it that way when we look at the whole object because of all that other information like the orange and purple bits that our brain compares it to, contrasts it to. How about this one? This is a different phenomena. Look around at the different parts of this image. As you look around, you know, it might depend a little on your screen size how well this one works, but as you look around, does it happen to move? Does it seem to move? The thing is, this is just a static, motionless JPEG file. It's not a GIF, it's not a movie. There's no movement, no animation at all. It's your brain that adds the movement when you look around. And if that one didn't seem very convincing, this one is often a little more clear to people. Look around, move your eyes back and forth on this one, look at the different corners, and you're almost guaranteed to see some motion. It looks like there's movement on the screen. But, again, there's nothing going on here. There, it's a static image, and you can see that if you just compare like frames one after another of it, screenshot it a few times and compare it. Nothing changes, and you can kind of get it to stop moving if you're able to really not move your head and not move your eyes very much and stare directly at one bit of the image or one corner of the image. And make sure you really don't move your eyes, and it'll stop moving. But as soon as you wiggle your eyes, even the littlest bit, which is kind of hard to avoid, you'll start seeing movement again. We'll come back to that. Of course, while visual illusions are the most well-known and most popular, we'll see a lot of them in this course, we'll also see in this course all sorts of illusions can occur in the other senses. For example, our ears can betray us too. So I'm going to play an auditory illusion here with a sort of M.C. Escher-like background you know, visual just for fun. But I want you to listen to the auditory track. Listen to the sound here. Listen to what your brain perceives, and you'll probably hear this sound, this set of tones, getting higher and higher and higher in pitch. It's going up in pitch as you listen. But keep listening and see if something weird comes, you know, start noticing something weird. You can watch this longer in the slides or find examples of this online or there's a you know Super Mario or Mario 64 level that <laughs> plays into this. But like it seems to keep going up and yet it never actually gets anywhere. It never gets so that's an auditory illusion. We'll actually return to this and get an explanation in our second topic of the course when we learn about the sense of hearing, of audition. Okay. Now how about this one? Looking at these two towers, the left and the right one, which tower is leaning more? Which one is tilted more to the side and which one is more straight up and down? Most people when they look at this will say, oh clearly the one on the left is more straight up and down, the one on the right is tilted more, right? Tilted more to the right, except all I've done is copy paste the same picture twice. It's the exact same picture. There's no extra tilt to the one on the right. So why is it that our brain has trouble like not seeing it as tilted more to the side, it's because our brain is taking that contextual surrounding information. When you look at the one on the left, okay, it's tilting a little bit to the right. When you look at the one on the right, the brain says, oh, everything around it was tilting a little to the right, and this one's also tilting to the right. So it adds that together and seems like it's double tilting to the right. It's an illusion. It doesn't mean that that one on the right is actually tilting more, just a copy of the same picture. Okay, what about here? Oh no, we've got a big monster chasing a small monster down this tunnel. Except, if you put a ruler or your finger up against each monster on the screen, you'll see they're the same actual size. That means the proximal stimulus hitting your retina is also the same size. So why do we see one of those monsters as bigger? And it's hard not to see it as bigger when you first look at this picture. And I'll give you a hint, it's, you know, our brain is going to interpret all those other lines on the page as cues of depth or three-dimensionality. We'll return back to that. Same idea in this picture, it's the same thing really going on. The one on the left makes sense to us, it looks like a normal picture, but the one on the right seems all messed up. It's a weird picture, something's wrong here, right? In both cases, the lady takes up the same amount of the picture. It's actually just a literal sort of Photoshop copy and paste to that lady, but when the context 
the surrounding information in the image, tells our brain that she is up close to us at the front of the picture, then the only way she would take up such a small bit of the image is if she is a tiny person, right? So these are just examples, these, all these illusions that we've seen here, and we'll see lots more throughout the semester. They're, they're kind of errors in our system where what we perceive is not a direct match with reality. We're not perceiving reality correctly. That's what we call them illusions. But these errors aren't really a mistake. They're, they're adaptive. We need our brain to use cues to interpret sensory input because sensory input is often ambiguous. As we'll see, our brain has to make guesses because the stuff that hits our eyes, the proximal stimulus, doesn't give us enough information to deduce what's going on out in the world between many possible states of reality. So our brain has to have some rules or heuristics in order to, to make its best guess so that we can go and live our lives, so we can go and interact with things. So. What we can really say is perceptual illusions or errors, they're important. They're actually a big part of sensation and perception, not just because they're fun and they make us laugh or we can impress our friends. It lets us study how the system normally functions. And we will see lots of examples throughout the course. And we'll return to, to these ones that we've seen and, and see why they occur.